Stuart, welcome to Wired 2014. Hello, how are you? Fabulous. So you're in Manchester? Uh, yeah, just outside Manchester. And what, what can we do to make your day better today? Sorry, say that again? How, how can we improve your day here at Wired 2014? Is there anything you'd like to do? Um, I'd like to wander around the conference, I think. Um, once we get the robots all sorted. Um, but yeah, I'd like to get to the speech and not flood any lines. That would be awesome. <laughs> and I think we're going to try and help you fly. Yeah, that's the plan. Well, it's all, it's your stage, Stuart, so talk us through what you're doing and see if live technology works. Okay. So, I'd like to talk to you all today about using robots to access the world, to participate in it. I'm talking really about the extensible self. I'm here, but I'm not here. I'm kind of driving this thing, but I'm not this thing. And, you know, for me, being quadriplegic makes me feel a bit like this anyway. As the connections between my brain and my body are disrupted, you get this, well, really strong sense of being a brain in a jar, a self driving around a body. So it's just a small step from there to driving around in a robot. It can zip down um, narrow corridors and it can move through corners and most importantly, some of them can fly. It really feels like I'm reaching out into the world through this screen. I mean, we all do this anyway. You guys extend your bodies all the time. You put on gloves and reach into your oven, you put on goggles and swim underwater, you throw your voice down phone wires into the air, into space. So I've extended myself through this screen like a hand waving a flag out of a window. You can see me, I'm here, hello. Oh, no. <laughs> so the extensible self means using robots to move through the places you can't go. If you're able-bodied, that's useful, it's fun, and it's pretty cool, but if your mobility is restricted like mine is, it's life-changing. It really is everything, because often you can't go anywhere. From 2009 to just a few weeks ago, I couldn't leave my house. For most of the time, I couldn't even leave my bed. I can't move my arms and legs anymore. And so for years and years, I laid on one side and then the other side, and unable to even see out of the window. Yeah, it was a total bummer. But there's no one that can spoil me for Breaking Bad now. <laughs> and thank Bob for the internet is all I can say. So, it was on the internet I saw a TED talk about drone flight, and it instantly occurred to me how drones could give me back a sensation of movement of how they could get me out of my house, out of my bedroom, my body, just out of here. Now, I wasn't the first person to think this, and eventually I got in touch with Professor Chad Jenkins and his team at Brown University. They're working on an extension to the robot operating system called Empower. You should Google it, it's really cool. And they're the ones that introduced me to the Parrot AR drone, and that's what I'm going to try and fly today. Try and fly. Okay. So, on the big screen, you should be able to see what I can see. So, I'm watching three video feeds, flying a drone, giving a presentation, using just my head and right index finger. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay. Whoa. Must not hit tech journos in the head. <laughs> so, I can go. So, I can slide to the left a little bit. I can slide to the right a little bit. And in the real world, I can't turn around to see what somebody's saying. 
if they stood behind me, but I can spin to the left a little bit, to the right a little bit. I'm kind of constrained by the stage, and it's absolutely impossible to do this in real life. So glad I didn't hit anybody. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I can't move my body. I can't get out of this wheelchair. But I can totally fly. Robots are awesome. <laughs> so this drone wasn't meant for disabled people. And in fact, out of the box, I can't fly it at all. But because it's scriptable, because it's hackable, I found ways to use it myself. I'm using Nodecopter, which is built on Node.js to fly this today. Andrew from Nodecopter team has been madly coding this week so I could fly this drone over the internet. Nodecopter is brilliant and so is the Parrot, but through Robots Cake, I'm working with Kevin Finisterre on Operation Quadricopter Kevin's building me a new drone, one that's designed to be flown with my head. When hooked up to FPV goggles, I'll be actually able to experience flight. None of this would be possible with closed systems, but because the people at Parrot put out an API, and because the people at Nodecopter built a new control interface, I can be here with all of you today. Anytime we leave a system open, any time you make it scriptable, any time you let people decide how they want to use your tools, any time you let others not just use your work, but build on your work, you make it easier for me and for all people to expand our world, to extend ourselves. Thank you.